Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast Mode. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Brad, and I'm back with another video. Guys, I'm coming to you today with a little bit of a channel update and something a little bit different. Um, just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the future of Nurse Bass and kind of where we go from here. So, I actually just hit my six year anniversary on YouTube, uh, which is interesting, you know. I've been doing this for a long time now. I started making videos when I was still completing prerequisites uh, before I ever even got accepted into nursing school. And, you know, over that course of time, I've been able to create over 275 videos on nursing related content. Uh, I've been able to reach so many people, millions of views by the grace of God. Um, never thought that would happen. And, uh, 275 videos of content. I've gotten to the point now where, to be perfectly honest, uh, I'm just burnt out on making nursing-related content. I really am. I have been doing it for over six years. I go to work and do it, and then to come home and to try and you know, synthesize a concept for a new nursing-related video when I've already done 275 of them is very very difficult and it feels like I'm wringing a sponge that's been dry bro it's been dry um, and so you know that kind of begs the question where do we go from here and I love making content and I love talking to you guys and I love engaging with you guys you know that's something that I really had the opportunity to reminisce whenever I, I like I had the realization oh it's been six years you know, that was just like a week ago. And it just kind of, I didn't even realize that it had occurred. And um, it just got me thinking about all, just all of the wonderful comments and emails and messages that I've gotten from you guys. So many that I just haven't even been able to reply to because there's been so many. And all of the wonderful comments uh, about how my content has been able to help in any shape or form. From minute to very, very big impacts in people's lives. And it's extremely humbling, man. You know, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who decided I wanted to be a nurse one day and decided to start making videos to document my journey. And like I said, by the grace of God, you know, people started listening and enjoyed the content and latched on and it grew and it grew. And I'm blessed, man. Extremely blessed. But that being the case, since I am burnt out on making that content, and like I said, you know, things really changed uh, after my parents passed away. Like, I was putting out a video a week at least, and, like, the content just dried up big time. The motivation was zapped, and, you know, now that I'm, I'm back in the ICU, I'm doing my thing. I'm enjoying things, but trying to make nursing-related content is just really tough, man, uh, for me at this juncture. So what I really think that I want to do is... I just want to make content for you guys. I want to get on here and I just want to have a chat, have a conversation. I have a backlog of comments and messages that I haven't been able to get to, unfortunately. And I'd like to start answering some questions um, because they're important. They're important. You know, one of my big things has always been grind on. It's always been perseverance. It's not being content with where you are. And, you know, these are concepts, constructs that really help mold the character of an individual that have been influential to me. And I think what I want to do moving forward is to talk about some of these things, talk about concepts and things that are have helped shape me into who I am and have helped bring me the successes that I have. And, you know, maybe just to help instill some of that in you guys. And also to start fielding questions from you guys, you know, now that I'm not necessarily trying to rack my brain about how to come up with a new nursing school related topic that I just absolutely am struggling for the life of me to come up with because I've made so many videos. Um, I want to start with something fresh. So what I wanted to do in this video, man, is I wanted to talk. I wanted to field a question from a lady named Megan. She sent this to me back in February, and I'm so sorry, Megan, that I'm just now getting to it. But she says, hey, Nurse Bass, I love your videos. I'm struggling quite a bit and figured I'd ask a question for maybe a future video. Little did she know. 
What can you do when you feel like you're not deserving or worthy of success and your dreams? Thank you. I'm doing my best to keep grinding. Thanks for the question, Megan. Again, I'm apologetic. I'm getting to it so late. You know, um, I think that's a a humanistic trait. I think that's a a characteristic within a lot of us, a, a majority of people that they have feelings of inadequacy. They have feelings that they aren't worthy of what they're receiving. I certainly felt that. You know, uh, and all that I can really do is speak from my experiences. But, you know, whenever you uh, grow up a little bit, whenever you grow up in the way that I did, I guess I should give you a little bit of backstory. You know, I grew up, um, I wouldn't say poverty, you know, I had a period of my life where my brother and I and my mother, you know, we were technically homeless. We were living out of a hotel. Um for a small portion of our lives, we bounced around from house to house. Um, best house that I had ever lived in prior to adulthood, um, like a two-story house, nice neighborhood, got the fenced-in yard that my father was able to afford for us. You know, we eventually ended up getting evicted and kicked out of there and just just kind of grew up rough, man. And, um, you know, from those of you who have been following me for a while, you know, uh, you're aware that both of my parents passed away. I don't know if I've ever said the reason why, but, you know, they they both had their own issues with addiction. Um, and uh, that's the environment I grew up in. And, you know, you would, you would look at somebody like that and you might think, like, the cards are stacked against them. The, the cards are stacked against these people who grew up like this, you know. Um, and whenever you grow up like that, whenever... You grow up like that. Certainly, certainly you're going to feel like you're not worthy of success. This is the life that you were born into. A lot of times it's survival mentality. My father, uh, he was a warehouse worker the majority of his life and always living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, one of the things he always told me was, you know, don't ever be like this. You know, he didn't want me to be a warehouse worker because he knew the kind of life um, that you could have as a result. And whenever you, I was growing up and I saw that and I, I saw how my parents were struggling, both with their addictions and then, of course, from a financial perspective, it, it made it really difficult for me to, you know, to envision a life better you know, a a better life to feel deserving of a life. That's better. I guess you could say, I just felt like this is my existence. This is it. And that, like I said, that survival mentality, where do we go from here? So certainly I can relate to what Megan's talking about from that personal perspective. Um, And then as I did start to gain successes, you know, from an educational standpoint and then from a professional standpoint, certainly didn't feel worthy of it. I can tell you that, man. I can tell you that big time. Coming from where I came from, you know, a lot of my friends, they were still back in the same town, still doing the same things. And I had a, I had moved out of town uh, right before I got into nursing school. And, um, you know, in a way, in hindsight, I don't think I was necessarily aware of it at the time, but in hindsight, it was like I had gotten out, so to speak. Um, but I always felt like an imposter. And I think that's kind of what Megan's alluding to as well. I always kind of felt like an imposter, like uh, I'm not supposed to be here. You know, it's like... It's like those silly pictures of produce. It's like uh, a damn pear in a pile of apples. It's like it's day 632 and they still don't know that I'm here. You know, like that's me sitting in a damn nursing school classroom. Um, But what can you do when you feel like you're not deserving or worthy of success in your dreams? 
That's actually sort of a question that John Hawes had asked me um, whenever we got to go out to Texas. Me and my friend Shane um, and our podcast, Stop the Ship, we did an episode with him and um, kind of got to tell him a little bit about my backstory and my parents' addictions and then them passing away and things like that. And, you know, one of the things that he asked me was very similar to that. He's like, you know, whenever you grew up the way that you did, um, how did you... How did you find that worth? How did you how did you find that desire within yourself that you are deserving of better? And um, a portion of it was, although I grew up tough, a portion of it was, thankfully, I did have a few select very close friends of mine who helped provide that worth to me helped me realize that um, I don't have to be, you know, a fucking product of my environment. Don't have to be. I could very well be. That would be the easy thing to do. I could easily succumb to what many would view as my destiny. He's destined to be a warehouse worker. He's destined to fall to addiction. He's destined, destined, destined. But Fuck that. That's not real, man. That's a facade. It's false. Thankfully, I had friends who I consider family to help me realize I was deserving of more. But then also, you know, thankfully, I was able to get out of that environment. And once I was able to get out of that environment and when we moved out of town, um, moved elsewhere, I was really able to realize what I possess within me. That was that was a really, really big thing. It's like once I moved out, I had the realization that that doesn't have to be my destiny. I do not have to be a product of my environment. I got a fucking fire within me to be successful because of where I came from, because I didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck, because I didn't want to, you know, be borderline poverty. I wanted better things for my life. And because I wanted better things for my life, and I had that fire within me to grind, I did it. I just started doing it, man. It's a very small day-by-day thing. Um, But eventually these small steps trying to, uh, you know, however small of a step, trying to progress forward, that was the objective. And I don't know. I, I think... I think my work ethic and my determination to be successful and to not live in poverty um, helped propel me forward. And maybe where, whereas previously I had that thought in my mind that I was not deserving of success and this here is going to be my existence. But now, like fast forwarding, you know, going forward, whenever I'm grinding and I'm hungry and I don't want to live like that, I think putting in the work day by day is what built that feeling of worthiness. It built that feeling of I do deserve this. Why? Because I have been putting in the work, you know, and a lot of it really starts. A lot of it really starts with cultivating the mindset of it. It's it, it, it starts in here, man. Bef- the mind controls all. I've said it before. I'm going to make another video about it. The mind controls everything. It's the genesis of all. And in my mind, I want to be successful. I'm going to do things that are necessary in order for me to be successful. And as I gain those successes, that feeling of worthiness comes along with it. At least it did for me. Now for Megan, asking what can you do when you feel like you're not deserving or worthy of success? My recommendation would be to reflect upon your work. Now, it'd be one thing if like You were in school, you did the bare minimum to skate by, you passed the class, but you did the bare minimum and somehow you got into school and you just always did the bare minimum. In those instances, I can't really speak on that because in those instances, 
you may or may not be worthy of that success. But that's that's definitely not the case in this situation. In this situation, you know, I think what she's talking about is a feeling that the vast majority of us have, and it's those feelings of inadequacy. And so what can you do? Reflect. Reflect upon your hard work. Reflect upon everything that you've had to do and that you've had to sacrifice to get where you are. To get where you are and to achieve what you have. You know. And to understand that, you know, your past, your upbringing, your mother, your father, your friends, your job, all of it. It's all secondary. It's all peripheral. It's not you. And because it's not you, I mean you at the core, who you are, who you are, Megan. You know, you know, in some instances, you might would say you could say we are. A product, a culmination of all of these peripheral things and these experiences. Sure. But at the end of the day, it doesn't define you. And that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. So I would say to look within yourself, man. Look within yourself. Reflect upon everything that you've done and all of the hard work that you've put in to gain those successes. And because you have done that work because you have done what is necessary to gain those successes rest assured in the fact that you are deserving of those successes you are worthy and even if you have not obtained any successes yet now I feel like I'm talking to myself I'm talking to Brad 8 years ago in 2012 Sleeping on a mattress with the fleas. My brother's over in the bedroom, but he would attest to that. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Sleeping on the floor on a mat on a mattress with a mask on so that you're not inhaling fleas <laughs> in your sleep. If you have not achieved successes yet, then those feelings of inadequacy and finding it difficult to um to feel that worthiness uh, is is compounded greatly. It's so much more difficult to feel deserving of success, uh, to feel worthy of success when you've not yet achieved anything. At least you haven't achieved the goals that you want to achieve. And in those instances, I'm just here to tell you that you are worthy. You matter. That's a big thing, man. So few people are reassured of that. We live in a world where everything is so fast paced. We all want instant gratification. It's go, go, go. Technology has exploded and and only accelerated. You know, it's been a catalyst for the speed at which we live our lives or we live our lives so quickly that, you know, individually we struggle to find time to just stop and smell the roses of our successes we're so grind minded that it's hard to stop and reflect upon our successes much less to stop and take time to reassure somebody to almost comfort somebody and so that's what I want to do right now I just want to tell you for those of you out there who have not yet achieved your goals, who are still struggling to not only achieve your goals, but to find that sense of worth. I'm here to tell you, you are worthy, man. You're deserving, regardless of where you come from, who your parents are, etc. You deserve it. That's real. That's real. That's something else that I had talked about whenever me and John Hawes had our had our little podcast. You know. It's a very important thing to me. 
for people to understand that that they're worth it. Because like I said, the vast majority of us do battle with those feelings of inadequacy.